Grocery stores are really anchor institutions for the community. They provide so many economic benefits to the community. They're a source of jobs. They contribute to the local tax base. They help recirculate dollars in the community. You know, imagine if a community were to lose its grocery store, what would happen? You would feel this ripple effect across the community, this very palpable effect. And what happens when the grocery store closes? How does that affect other businesses in town? So you have a lot of people concerned about supporting their local grocery store, you know, community stakeholders, economic developers, other city leaders, because they play such a critical role in rural communities. The Rural Grocery Initiative, housed within K-State Research and Extension, aims to sustain locally owned rural grocery stores to enhance community vitality and improve access to healthy foods by identifying and sharing resources that support grocers and rural communities. Its National Rural Grocery Summit, being held June 20th and 21st in Wichita, is considered the premier networking and resource-sharing venue for independent grocers and stakeholders. On today's Sound Living, innovative solutions for sustaining rural grocery stores. Sound Living is a weekly public affairs program produced by Research and Extension at Kansas State University. I'm Jeff Wickman. Research shows that grocery stores are critical to maintaining vibrant, healthy, and thriving communities. Unfortunately, rural grocers are facing a challenging and ever-changing retail landscape that makes it difficult to stay in business. However, program manager for the Rural Grocery Initiative, Erica Blair, says there are many rural grocer success stories, and that's why this biennial summit is so important. Erica, first off, maybe just some background on the summit. It's been going on for quite a while, and it's really grown into this national event. Yes. So the summit actually started in 2008, shortly after the Rural Grocery Initiative got started. So little background, there was a unit on campus called the Center for Engagement and Community Development that started doing listening sessions across the state just to understand what are some of the challenges that rural communities are facing And the thing that just kept coming up again and again through those listening sessions was this concern for the viability of rural grocery stores because they are so important for communities. So that's really how the Rural Grocery Initiative got started. That was back in 2007. One of the very first things that they did was conduct a survey of rural grocers across the state of Kansas. So the focus of that very first Rural Grocery Summit was to look at the results of that survey, and it was held in Inman, Kansas, and it brought Kansas grocers and community stakeholders to that first summit. And really, since then, it's grown (laughs) since then. So it's been held every other year since 2008, except for 2020, of course, because of the pandemic. But now it went from being kind of a Kansas-centered summit to now it's a national summit, and we have people from all over the country coming to this Rural Grocery Summit now. Which really makes a lot of sense because we know that this is an issue that lots of states are facing. Yeah. The issues that rural grocers face in Kansas are the issues that rural grocers face in rural communities across the country from very slim profit margins, high operating costs, competition with chain supermarkets and dollar stores. So yeah, you really see these issues playing out across the country. And this is important because we've been hearing a lot about food deserts, and it's tough, isn't it? It is very tough, and grocers play an enormous role in addressing the issue of food deserts. They are, you know, a critical source of healthy food, affordable healthy food. You find that grocery stores can provide healthy food options at a more affordable price than their convenience store counterparts. And we also know, we have seen study after study showing that there is a connection between food access and health outcomes. So really, these grocery stores are critical to the health of their communities. A lot of what we run into is the fact that without the grocery store, a lot of people don't want to be in the community. So there's kind of an outflow from the community when they lose the grocery store. Grocery stores are really anchor institutions for the community They provide so many economic benefits to the community. They're a source of jobs. They contribute to the local tax base. They help recirculate dollars in the community. And just, you know, imagine if a community were to lose its grocery store, what would happen? 
you would feel this ripple effect across the community, this very palpable effect. And what happens when the grocery store closes? How does that affect other businesses in town? You can imagine if you lose your local grocery store, more people are going to be traveling outside of town to get their food because that's a fundamental need, of course. And when they're going outside of town, they're probably going to be picking up other items as well. So, you know, it has that effect on other local businesses, and then it has the effect of attracting new residents. It's harder to attract residents when you don't have a grocery store. So the grocery store for rural communities is really kind of an existential issue. You have a lot of people concerned about supporting their local grocery store, you know, community stakeholders, economic developers, other city leaders, because they play such a critical role in rural communities. So how are we attacking this then? How are we keeping these rural grocers going? What are some of the things that they've come up with that seem to be working in other areas? One thing that we have seen in our office is just more innovative and alternative grocery ownership models. So for instance, we have seen more cooperatives across the country where, you know, the whole community is coming together to support that grocery store. We've seen nonprofit grocery stores. We've seen cities partnering with the grocery store in numerous ways to help maintain them. So we've seen, you know, those kinds of innovative solutions across Kansas and other places in the country. And then we've just seen more focus on business transition planning. So when a grocer is ready to retire or move on for whatever reason, there is somebody ready to take over that grocery store. So that takes a lot of, you know, proactive thinking, lots of innovation that has to go on. And we have seen a a pilot project in North Dakota. It's a shared service cooperative. So there are three grocers, a restaurant, and a community development organization that have formed a cooperative so that they can purchase together to attract a wholesaler and get, you know, a better, more affordable price. So we've seen that happen. That's kind of an innovative solution, and they're actually going to be featured at the Rural Grocery Summit. A lot of creative thinking that has to happen since grocers face so many unique challenges. In regard to the summit, there's an opportunity for those in attendance to really learn and share their ideas and maybe find out exactly what might work in their community. Definitely. The summit is really just a great opportunity to learn about what's going on, innovative solutions, different creative ideas that grocers can hear about and then take back to their store and use it how it fits their community. So yeah, different topics at the summit. We're going to be talking about different alternative, innovative ownership models, forming partnerships with community leaders and other grocery stores, business transition planning, different funding opportunities that grocers can take advantage of. One of the things that I have heard grocers really enjoy is hearing the success stories of other grocery stores. It's a chance to learn from each other and make connections with each other as well so that grocers are able to speak with other grocers who know what they're going through and what their challenges are. There's that shared understanding at the summit. And yeah, those connections are formed and and they can last beyond the summit as well, which is really a wonderful thing. Well, that's what I was thinking. It would be really nice to have that connection so that when you do have a question as to whether or not you want to move in this direction, maybe you've got somebody that you can talk to before you jump, I guess. Whenever you do anything new, it's a risk. So it's nice to talk to somebody who's already been there, has already been through it, and can tell you about the lessons that they learned. It sounds like sometimes people feel that this is maybe a a major risk to have a store in a small community. I'm wondering how true is that? I, I know any business venture is risky, but At the same time, it sounds like communities are making this work and we maybe just need more people to sometimes take that risk. That's an interesting question. I think that, you know, anyone in the grocery industry would tell you it's very challenging, (laughs) but we still see a lot of people wanting to get into grocery, a lot of young people, and they're really doing it because they see the importance of grocery stores. They see how important it is for their community. And yeah, I think that's also why, like you're saying, we're seeing more partnerships. We're seeing more 
community leaders, city leaders getting involved and trying to figure out how to make this work in in their communities. So it is definitely a challenge, but there are very creative, solution-oriented people who are who are making this work. One of the issues I know has always been the ability to get fresh fruits and vegetables into local communities. Is there some partnerships starting to form between some of the rural grocers and the rural farmers in those areas? Because it seems like there's a lot of farmers markets, but sometimes those are only once a week and you need something before the farmers market hits. Yes. And that's actually something that we're going to be talking about at the summit as well, how to form connections between the local producers and the grocery store. One major benefit of partnering with producers and selling local food is that it helps the grocer kind of set themselves apart. They're offering something that their competitors, the chain supermarkets or the dollar stores, probably are not going to be offering. And that really helps bring people into the store, build more customer loyalty. It's setting themselves apart. And we all know locally produced food is just better quality. (laughs) You know, it's great. So that is certainly something that we're seeing. And You know, during the pandemic, that was a way that grocers were able to get products into their store when they were facing all of these supply chain disruptions. And I think it's just something that more and more people are wanting, more and more people are wanting local food. What are some other things that are going to be taking place at the summit that might be of interest? Well, we have some excellent keynote speakers. We have a fourth generation grocer who will be talking about how they remain competitive in rural markets. We also have a couple keynote speakers who have kind of this 30,000 foot view of what's going on in rural America generally and what are some of the systemic issues that grocers face related to pricing and competition. And then we have the Rural Access Distribution Co-op, the RAD Co-op, which is that shared service cooperative where we have grocers, a restaurant, and a community development organization coming together to purchase together and get, you know, a better deal. And so that's a pilot project happening in North Dakota. It's really a cool, innovative solution to distribution challenges in rural communities. I think the other kind of neat thing is that people from across the country will be coming. We have people from each coast, (laughs) California to New York, who are going to be coming. That's just a really great opportunity, again, to just meet new people, learn from each other, make those connections, those lasting connections, so that even after the summit ends, you can go back to those people and and you have that network there, that support network. So lots of great things going on at the summit. You mentioned the succession planning as being something that is of value. And is that something that you'll cover as well at the conference? Yeah, we do have a breakout session specifically on succession planning. This is such an important topic because we have a lot of baby boomers who are getting ready to retire, frankly. And so this is really not just affecting the grocery industry, but all businesses, really. So, you know, needing to figure out what is the future of this business, who's going to be running this business when I'm ready to move on. That is a very complicated topic, and it's something that is inevitable and needs to be thought about early on. So we're definitely going to cover that at the summit. And we have several experts who have a lot of experience helping businesses and grocers through this process. So we'll get to hear from them on some of the best practices and things that you should be doing now to prepare for succession planning. A lot of information on the website. So how can they find out all the information and then get registered for this summit? To register, you can go to www.ruralgrocery.org slash summit. That's where you can register and look at the agenda, see who the keynote speakers are. I will also mention that the early bird registration is ending May 15th. So that's coming up soon. So you'll want to get registered soon. That's Erica Blair, Program Manager for the Rural Grocery Initiative, housed within K-State Research and Extension. The National Rural Grocery Summit is being held June 20th and 21st in Wichita. Again, for more information or to register, visit ruralgrocery.org. Sound Living is a weekly public affairs program produced by Research and Extension at Kansas State University. I'm Jeff Wickman. 
And this is the K-State Radio Network.